is Elliot Serrano and Jose Melendez coming to you from uh, Dreamland Comics in Schaumburg, Illinois. Thank you for joining us here yet again on CCW TV, the Comic Culture Warrior video channel. You better fucking enjoy these episodes, man, because it could be another six months. <laughs> it might be another six months before you see us again. Nah, nah, we'll we'll do more. It's just it's just tough. It's just suddenly. It's like uh, it's like trying to get uh, 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 Simon and Garfunkel together. Well, they hate each other, though. Don't they? Uh, I think it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, the last segment that you saw a few days ago uh, was Jose and I. If you're lucky, it was only a few days ago. <laughs> was uh, Jose and I talking about uh, Wonder Woman? And why can't she be as good as the current uh, superheroes in the DCU right now? And that's what be, be, some of you might bring up, like, well, why don't you guys, you know, throw in some female-centric characters, uh, comics for Marvel? Because they really don't have any. I can't think of any. I mean, there's She-Hulk that's going on right now, but that's a miniseries for crying out. Like, Miss Marvel canceled. Yeah, it's... I don't even know... I can't think... No, actually, I'm looking at all the Marvel books from here... I don't see a single... F- From like A to, yeah. a to F. <laughs> yeah. I don't see any real like top female characters yeah, out there. It, it, yeah, so that's why. you know, Because Marvel... You know, last year was the year of the Marvel woman, woman. And they didn't care enough about them to give one of them an ongoing. Yeah, this year is this year is the... the now shut up already. Shut yeah. up about it. Yeah, that, remember when la- we told you that? That they were just doing it to make amends? Yeah. And they didn't even give a shit about it? What has come of it? Absolutely not a goddamn thing. Because on top of, uh, well, yeah, hey, give us about for last rants. But. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, one of those books, and of course in the last segment we talked about how Nick Spencer was doing a killer job on Supergirl. And it's sad well, that he it's, only did half the issue. A, a few we don't issues. Know he did. Well, he's done, he's no, done previous issues. No, Supergirl. that was the first one. I thought he did a couple of other no. ones. No. no. Oh, yeah, that was supposed about, to be. I'm thinking about Sterling. Sterling Gates. Sterling yeah, Gates. He was the he old was writer. One. Right. Nick Spencer was supposed to replace him. Okay. Why can't Nick Spencer do Supergirl? Because right now he is killing it. No, we don't know if that's why. He's I say it's why. Because he's really he's killing it with um, Morning Glories, and this book, Infinite Vacation, and Thunder Agents, and Thunder Agents. But um, we've talked before about this renaissance that's going on at Image Comics right now. You know. Um, yes, we bitch and moan about the mainstream books. But that's the mainstream books. There's a lot of awesome, awesome stuff going on in the indies. IDW is doing some great stuff. Oni Press is doing awesome stuff. Um, Dark Horse is doing some good stuff. And, of course, the Image books. This is uh, the Image Shadow... Shadow Line. Shadow Line. This is Jim Valentino's line of books. Um, when you told me to read Imprint. this... Um, I did. I told him. Yeah, he did. He said, you've got to read this. You've got to read this. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll do because it's Nick Spencer, and I'm buying in the Morning Glories. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's good. Um, Has that trade come out yet? Nope. Nope. Um, Issue 6 came out last week, but the trade hasn't come out yet. And I think trade's only going to be $9.99. $9.99, so then you can buy that and then pick up the next issue? Yes. And then then actually... uh, the I think Morning Glories is $3.50 right now, and Nick Spencer is actually lowering the price from the next issue on to $2.99. Nice, nice. Exactly, nice. Oh, speaking of which, these were all two ninety nine too, by the way. A point that I wanted to bring up too, because did they drop the two pages? They dropped the two pages. I didn't feel. I didn't I see. Did I. I, didn't, I was well, like, it streamlines the story. Yeah, I was like, I didn't. I wasn't missing those two pages. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't miss splash page, double yeah. splash page. Yeah, yeah really. It, 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 yeah. it just made things more coherent. Right. Makes the writers write better. Um, but anyway, Infinite Vacation. I'm going to tell you right now, Nick Spencer is bringing it much like how Jonathan Hickman and Matt Fraction used to bring it. Used to. You know. Key phrase there. (laughs) Um, This is, the one thing I really like about this, and it speaks to how many comic books and many comic book writers, like Warren Ellis or Jonathan Hickman or others, they're really science fiction writers. Mm -hmm. And I'm... Nick Spencer is an excellent science fiction writer. This is a science fiction story that you don't really have to know techno babble and stuff. In fact, he takes all the conventions of having um, little mobile apps and stuff, mm-hmm. 
Okay, imagine having a mobile app. The premise of this book is imagine having an app on your phone that allows you to exchange lives with any of your own alternate selves in any of the infinite multiple realities that are right. out there. So if you're like, if you're kind of like down in the dumps because you didn't meet that girl in that coffee shop that one day, you find the alternate reality where you actually wrote, worked up the nerve to talk, talk to her. her and switch. But the best thing is that all your alternate versions are selling you the opportunity to be yourself. To be yourself. <laughs> which is fucking Which is pretty clever. genius. Yeah. It is clever. It's really clever. So I read this issue, and um, once you get past the initial conceit of the story, then Nick Spencer really gets into the character of Mark. Oh, mm -hmm. and, and this... Um, Christian Ward does this incredible artwork. Yeah, this, this artwork thing. is amazing. This artwork is gorgeous. This looks so lifelike, too. <laughs> it looks like Rowan Atkinson's no, no, brother kind of or something, you know? Um, but uh, it, it gets past it because it gets into the character, and Mark is like this guy. He's working kind of a... He does, you never really get into what he does for a living, right? right? It's just, it's, I, I think that maybe Spencer just left it open to yeah. be able to... Just kind of like an everyman. Yeah. yeah, so you can go, oh, okay, he does, we don't... You assume he just works some sort of like everyday cubicle, office job, cubicle, yeah. right? And um, he's trying to break out of the rut that he's in with his life. But uh, Spencer, of course, does this great ad, uh, this great twist on the old no matter where you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> this is no matter who you are, that's still you. Because he keeps switching and switching and switching. And he realizes that no matter how many times he switches, he's still himself. Right, and 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 there's one bit where he meets that the one version the of one himself. One version that actually and, got it right. Right, if, and According all of reality. Him. Right, yeah. that that really figures it out. So, um, I've got to say, if you're not a comic book reader, and let's say you're just a science fiction a reader, you're into science fiction, and you want to get into comic books, this is a great book to get into because while there are also uh, speaking of the visual language. While there, um, there are some somewhat sophisticated layouts with it, mm -hmm. they're not difficult to follow at all. Right. You know, and again, you know, um, you know, um, um, Ward does a nice job of designing the, the panels and the layouts so your eye can follow everything as it's going. And it really adds to the overall experience of the book. It's a very nice mesh of, of words and, and pictures in the narrative right here. So, I mean, again... I mean, just little, little clever things about how his therapist is himself in a different like in a different, his, a different version of himself. And, a customer service for the company yeah, is it's, always you because you, you would never be rude to yourself. <laughs> yeah, but then, I mean... So yeah, you get, don't know me. I'd be, I'd be totally rude to myself. I'd tell myself to fuck off. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you, know, you get this whole thing in the, in the first like 75% of the book about the, this mark and, and, and what this the infinite mm -hmm. vacation is and it lays down the groundwork obviously for what's going to happen in the rest of the miniseries so you think and then you get to this point where like Elliot brought up earlier Mark is in this coffee shop and mm -hmm. he sees this woman there and he sees you know he doesn't know he, and I it's so real yes this conversation that he has mm -hmm. with himself Yep. It's so fucking yep. real. And she's real, too. Right. She is very real. I've, I've, i got to show this. Maybe it's a spoiler, but i got to show it. This page right here has to sell it right mm -hmm. there. That when you see her, your jaw has got to drop just like Mar Mark's jaw drops. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm there going, oh, no, okay, she's gorgeous for one. Mm -hmm. And I would have been, I would have acted the same way if I had met her in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, you're right. Um, and then... It goes in one direction, and you think you know where it's going to go. Right, so we're going to, if you haven't read this, we might get into a little bit of spoiler territory with the ending, so you might want to just stop this video and just go out and buy it and read it, and then and come, back. Read it, come back and watch, like, the rest of two minutes of this video. <laughs> so, you know, you have this thing with Mark, and he's and he's, he sees her looking at him, but he doesn't know if she's interested, mm -hmm. and here he is, you know, he, he's befuddled, he doesn't know what to do, he... And he's so used to just living his life vicariously through himself in right. other versions right. that when she when she looks at him before she leaves, then there's this part where she's outside of the coffee shop that they were in. Right. She looks back in, right. and he still doesn't do anything. Right. Because he's gotten so used to, well, 
I can just go onto my apps and see if anybody else is still currently talking with her or did talk to her and is with her, and I could just live that and then I could just go visit that life. Right. Instead of changing the one he's in right, right. then. So right. when you think he's going to do that, when he's just about to do that, she comes back in and she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I know. I, I love that part. I, I really, really love that part. And, and it turns out that um, she is one of the many or one of the few people in the world the three percent they say 97 percent of the world does this infinification she's one of the people don't. Who, right. who don't do it right. at all and you know he kind of insults her mm-hmm. without knowing about that and then so it's just whole thing about the ease of what this application would do with your life that you wouldn't even need to do anything right with yourself that you can just you know you can hope that other versions of yourself did the same thing uh, and I, that says a lot about the current state of society and bullshit like that with the internet and stuff like that. But there is another subplot as well, too, is that Mark is also finding that many versions of himself are dying. Are dying, yeah. So he's thinking that maybe his ticket's going to get punched soon because so many of him are dying in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really... Um, and then with the last page, which we're not going to spoil at all... Um, Where's the book going to go from here? You, you think it's going to be about something. But then that's, I mean, the last page is really, is really when the story really starts for starts Mark. For Mark. I mean, well, Spencer needs to lay all the groundwork for the reality of this comic that you're reading so you understand what he's going to be going through. So he lays all that down, and then, bam, that's when the story starts. I'm going to say this for folks who are into science fiction. This book compares quite favorably to a lot of, uh, pulp science fiction. This one made me think of uh, David Gerald's The Man Who Folded Himself, which was essentially a time travel story where a guy keeps meeting versions of himself because he's, he keeps traveling up and down his own timeline. Okay. So um, that's what this reminded me of, and that's one of my all-time favorite science fiction novels. This book made me think of that, and Nick Spencer is just showing how you can take comic books, and it's not just about superheroes punching each other. It's about deep thought, concepts, ideas, making you reconsider the human condition, and all that great stuff that comic books can make us do. And, uh, wait, close quote, put that on the trade for me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to, to, to go back really quick about something you said, that he, I, I can't help, I cannot help, um, this book specifically, about thinking of Jonathan Hickman's image work. Yeah. And how much I really, really miss Jonathan Hickman's image work. Right. I mean, Nightly News, Pax Romana, Red Mass from Mars, though it took like a year for the last issue of that to come out. Where, I I miss that Jonathan Hickman. I Yeah, I'm buying Fantastic Four. Yeah, I'm buying Secret Warriors begrudgingly. Uh, you know, <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D. is still good. But at least, you know, that type of cerebral type of storytelling, at least someone's doing it. Right. right. Someone's still doing it. And Image is full of stuff like this. And again, I know we threw the word cerebral out there, and that's probably scared half of you off. <laughs> but you don't, again, you don't, there, this, this is not a book full of a bunch of uh, gobbledygook techno jargon that's going to confuse you. It's, it's not like it Nick has Spencer this... writes it and, and, and puts it into a context where everybody will understand because exactly. of the applications that he uses. Exactly. It's, it, everyone uses everything in this day-to-day life. Right. Everyone knows what he's talking about. Right. So he lays, lays it down in the simplest of terms, so everyone can understand it. If you are a guy who thinks you're kind of a sad sack loser that has a hard time talking to girls, bam, there's your book. Yeah, and if you're a fan of Philip K. Dick, bam, there's, there's your, your book. book. Yep. I mean, just... Yep, absolutely. Wow. I wasn't going to throw Philip K. Dick out there, but you did it. I, I, I agree. I agree. God damn it, now you're going to end up on the trade. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so Infinite Vacation, pick it up. When we come back, we'll have a Last Rant, the first Last Rant of 2011. Let's see if we can make it a doozy. See you then.